Hey, I'm back to France, I'm back home, and in this video we are going to talk about, let me take my notes, uh, what we are working on, an upcoming collaboration with Purism, or an ongoing project, which are going to lead to some good tutorials, the work we have been doing on the tools that we are making at GD Quest, and let's talk a bit about life to get started with that whole devil thing. Since I came back, I started simplifying my material and digital life. So I moved away from social networks some time ago, focused on Twitter and YouTube, and um, I'm also getting rid of material stuff, so you can see it's a bit of a mess. But for example, in front of you, you can see absolutely all of my shirts, and in the back you have some blankets. Here you have, I have two microphones now. Basically, I, I try to have as few items as I can that still allow me to work and live productively and things I can keep for a long time. So after the Kickstarter, I got some what I would call quality appliances like this blender. I moved to a vegan diet, so a blender is extremely important, having a good one and can save you a lot of money actually as well. Uh, this is our citrus tree, by the way. My dad is into natural agriculture. This is a mess as well, but these are some of the things I'm going to give away. I have lots of them, really. And a few books over there. I heard about the concept of Via Negativa on Luke Smith's channel. The guy is a linguist, a PhD student, I think, and a FOSS and Linux user. He talked about that in a video. The concept is all about simplifying your life through a subtractive process, which is similar to what we do as designers. In order to produce good design, you might build things up, you might add features to a game or to an application, for example, and then you reach a point where you want to work the other way around. You want to remove the superfluous parts, but also to do refining and polishing work. This is all about removing the asperities. You get that subtractive idea as well. I'm trying to apply it to my life to great effect so far, and I'll try to talk about it again in a dedicated video. Well, freshly done with the remake of the first chapter in the Godot course. You're going to have 18 tutorials, 19 videos that Big Dev Henrique is editing at the moment. And just we're just going to need a few more days maybe before it's done. This is a free update for everyone who has one of these three courses here. The make professional 2D games with the Godot game engine. We sent the keys for the Kickstarter backers who pledged 80 euros or more during the last campaign, so you should have that in your email. You have a link in the description to a news post where you have some details about receiving rewards in the Kickstarter. The original chapter one was really... I made it during the Good of 3.0 beta, had lots of trouble and didn't have as much experience as I have now, so it was not up to par with the content we make now. That's why I wanted to remake it, so the release will be next week. And by the way, thanks for the 5 star, five star ratings. I just saw that Gumroad added the ability to rate products and I'm glad to see that people like the things that we do. We'll do our best to keep improving them. And to do so, we need your feedback, so please tell us. You know, we are going to create new courses and starting with fresh foundations allows us to really from the ground up build better videos, better code and to use a different version of the engine, use up-to-date software, but we want to keep doing better and for that we need your feedback. So please, during the, this whole Kickstarter project and not just about Godot but regarding all the videos that we make, if you have constructive feedback, criticisms, or pointing out things that work for you, that's just as important as pointing out the things that don't work, please go ahead and tell us. On the tools front, we have quite a few improvements coming to our add-ons. 
The first one for the Krita GDQuest R tools, we have Larpen working on some exporter for 2D animation tools, and in particular, the COA tools for Blender, an add-on that allows you to do 2D character rigging and animation very easily in Blender. I made a videos about that in the past, showing you how you could set this up. This was for an older version, the add-on, I was still using Photoshop back then, but with the same tools you use to export everything, you're going to be able to export the document or selected layers to a JSON file along with all the sprites that you can then animate in Blender. And it turns out there is an importer for the Godot game engine. You, you still need some modifications to import it in Godot 3.0. I don't remember what it was for, but the idea is that you have much more advanced animation tools in Blender itself and this will make it a lot easier eventually to animate 2D characters. And for developers or people with know-how or in a team, obviously you can customize the import tools and get started much faster. Next up we have Davide Dafcry working on some interface for the BPS proxy tool, a tool to use FFmpeg outside of Blender to render proxies really quickly. And so he's adding some interface inside Blender itself and Power Sequencer. And the biggest job in progress right now is this one. We're having Power Sequencer ported to Blender 2.8 and it's almost done. As you can see right here, I'm gonna go to Edit, Preferences, and let's activate the work in progress power sequencer. There's a few tweaks, there's probably a few bugs still left. We have a tool to cut strips once again. If I, uh, mo most of the tools are working, it's only one or two that are not. We have to customize, yeah, I've got to get used to selections, but we have concatenate working, the shortcuts to quickly move, select everything. The only one that's not working at the moment, at the time of recording, is the cut tools here. Uh, there's a bug with drawing that prevents the tool from working, but we are on it. And with that, you're gonna be able to take advantage of Blender 2.8 and of Power Sequencer. We have some plugins made by PigDev, Henrique Campos, that allow us to create slides and edit text much more easily. They are free and open source there again, so you can use them to edit text edit nodes and to edit code blocks, the um, rich text label and text edit. Once you select a text edit node, you'll get this refresh button, which is going to set its minimum size so that within a container, it does not collapse. If I remove the minimum size in the rectangle category, the node is going to collapse on itself. And so you have the same problem if I were to convert a label to a rich text label here. It collapses on itself unless you set the minimum size to something. But the problem is you want really the size of the node to be set automatically just like the label. And this is a rich text label, just like a label. There's probably one somewhere. These nodes don't set their size on the y-axis automatically. So one thing you can do then is use the refresh button to have the node set its size more or less automatically. It's always a little tricky because it's wrapping and it doesn't take this in account. If the text, we have four lines of wrapped text, but two lines of text in the rich head node. And so this is a limitation that we have right now we have to calculate the wrapping. We also have this rich edit button that allows you to edit what you see is what you get, the text to add italic, bold, and to add a color, which will update in the view as you can see. And we are going to use that for more tutorials and slides, etc., for the Good Slides project as well. Now in the project settings, there's also the color palette and GQuest Docker. Color palette is going to give you a pre-built color palette that will then, if you have it active, 
it will appear here in the rich edit tool Henry K built a system where the plugins can hook into one another and the GQuest docker is going to take all the active plugins that can register into it and give you a docker with a list of the rich text edits, the text, the, the refresh buttons, etc. It will all appear in one place. But right now there's a bug that prevents me from activating it. Again, in the latest beta, Godot 3.1 is still not released and stable yet. It was working in a previous version. We have to check that. But this is just for the news. You can find these plugins, contribute to them in the Kickstarter repository, and we will likely move them to their own repository soon. To wrap things up, we are doing a collaboration with Purism while well, being sponsored by the company to do a three-part tutorial series on creating a game with the Godot game engine, very simple one, and publishing it on the Pure OS store and ideally on their upcoming Librem phone. A phone that runs entirely on Linux and that's designed to be really secure and respect your privacy, like the company does in general. I will talk more about that once again, once we have the project set up, I will try to see with them if we can share pictures, but in any case, the tutorials will be free and they will be under a permissive license, so you will be able to get the code to play with it. It's going to be nice, I guess, and we're working on more tutorials for Godot 3.1 moving forward. But that said, I want to thank you kindly for watching, be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.